We're here taking a look today at your videos. The way it works is you submit your videos and we could randomly pick them. We're going to go into your videos and see when people click on them, how can we make it so they never click off? They watch the entire thing through. That is our goal. We're at least hoping to get you somewhat in there. So uh, let us know right now, whether you're watching this after it's been a live stream or if you're in our live chat right now, um, if you're having, you know, some things you would like to improve, what, where, what areas would you like to improve on? That's what I'm trying to ask. What areas of video creation would you like to improve on? And, uh, as those comments come in, why don't we welcome today, uh, Viper. How's it going? Dan, what's up, man? Hello, people. How are y'all doing? Happy Wednesday. Happy January 11th. Oh, Dan, it's happening again, Dan. It's happening again. The year is already flying oh. by. We are 11 days into the year, Dan. Where has the time gone, dude? What is they want on right now? It's it's already too much. Uh, we we already got past our first live streams of the year, and and now we're kind of settling in. It's starting to feel normal, and uh, yeah, all those all those goals and and things that we've set before ourselves. Um, I, that's what we should have asked today. Like, how are those coming along? <laughs> You're almost You're halfway right. through January. You you told yourself you were going to get a thousand subscribers or whatever it might be. How's that going? So maybe maybe you can let us know that too. Uh, so thank you all for being here. The way this works is there are two forms linked down below. I'm going to pull this up. Hopefully, it's not going to echo on you guys. There is a non-gaming form, and there is a gaming form. And we're going to actually look at the channels that submitted first on both of these forms today. But you go ahead, submit yours down below. And after we get through some pre-selected channels, we're going to start randomly selecting channels. So you could end up having your channel displayed here uh we cleared the form just for everybody's uh knowledge we cleared the form a little bit later than usual so if you submitted um this morning or something like that you might want to resubmit because the form got erased and and yeah now you need to try again <laughs> my fault i apologize let's go ahead and take a look at the first channel who submitted on this form and we'll show you a little bit about how these video reviews work now they left us a comment and said that we reviewed their channel not that long ago they were hoping now we could review their videos uh they appreciate our tips from last time so uh we're going to take a look at maybe the first 30 seconds or so of this video and kind of give our thoughts hey guys sam and mason from the power fortress today we're going to show you how to build a basketball net i thought we were going to do a fishing net well, you can use this technique for both. You're going to need some type of cordage. For the basketball net, you can use paracord. So we're about 30 seconds in. We got an intro. We got a setup. We know what we're doing today. Um, we're already kind of getting into how we're going to do it. Uh, Viper, what do you think? Well, y'all know me, man. I always got a soft spot for the youngest on this channel because I I always just find it so like energizing when I see young people out there creating content at such a young age. So shout out to me, gentlemen, uh, with the good stuff out of the way. I don't know if it's you or them, but I felt like the audio came in a little hot. Um, they're a little yeah, loud. I had to lower it immediately. <laughs> yeah, they're, they came out a little loud. So you might want to work on a uh, 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 toning down the audio just a little bit. But other than that, um, I was kind of surprised at the editing and the the, the and the uh, slow motion, although I thought the, some of the slow motion was just a little bit overdone, but the fact that they're actually implementing slow motion, I was like, wait, what? Wow, okay. So I'm impressed. Uh, hey, I don't really have much to critique. Just keep doing your thing. Keep putting your content out there. Yeah, yeah. I, I appreciated the lighting so every everyone can be seen very clearly. Uh, I would I would say working on the audio is going to be key. Uh, and and it's not that the mic quality was bad to me. It was literally just that that really loud burst of sound at the beginning where you know i as a headphone user right now had the urge to immediately turn down my volume and what that might translate to with some other viewers is not turning them the volume but leaving the video like yeah. oh gosh you know I mean, is this the whole thing and they may not hit that volume button they might end up leaving so you want to make sure you go into your editing software and just be very careful about where your audio peaks are and, and go in and really do that sound mixing that needs to be done um yeah that that's that is one critique i think the only other thing i would say is like the the positioning of your camera like when you're doing b-roll shots like this with the basketball 
stuff, um, you're holding the net like really low, for example. So just being aware of little things like that, like the positioning, I think it would have been better if the camera was angled a little bit more with the net kind of in the middle and then you could see the basketball going through the net. Um, but yeah, no, ultimately I thought this was a really good setup. And uh, I guess there was one more thing, Viper, when I was watching, they said, you're gonna need some cordage. Um, this looks like two different products. I guess like part of me kind of wanted to know what, like I want to know more about these two different products and I, I they're probably going to get into it maybe a little bit later, but I felt like I was a little bit lost because they say you're going to need some cordage and then it's kind of quiet for a bit. Like there's no, no more line. Yeah, I'll show you. You're going to need some type of cordage. And so there's like a few seconds there where it's like, you know, we could, we could immediately get to the next clip where we're talking about it. I was kind of wondering if we're going to get there and then, you know, the next host comes on and says, you can use this kind of cord and, and so on and so forth. So letting mm -hmm. things kind of linger unnecessarily long kind of makes the audience feel like, oh, are we going to cover like what those are? You know, I, I kind of need to know that. So yeah, just those, those audible cues, those visual cues to get me to like, again, not click away. The uh, chat said there is some background hitting going on too in the audio. I did. I thought I heard some like crickets or something like, uh, yeah, just maybe you're, you're shooting this in an environment that's that's uh, maybe this is like a shed or something like that. So there's like a lot of outdoor noise. Um, and it could be that if you upgrade your your audio setup in the future, like if you get lavalier mics or something, just little clip on mics uh, that that might already help a ton. You know, it's going to take out a lot of that noise. Um, but yeah, let's let's look at their outro. Let's see how they kind of end their videos. I'm seeing like an animated logo here. Uh, we might have some tips for you here as well. Battle Rose out. So there's a lot of time left in the video. And this is always the point where we tell people if the, you have this video that's even a little bit similar to this one, instead of like having a really long outro screen with with basically this invitation to leave because the video's over, uh, you can point have the host point to something on the screen and say, by the way, we made a blank out of blank in this video right here on the screen now. So click on over to that one. Um, and I think I think there's another shot here I saw at the end. kind of this campfire you know thing going on it's kind of cool but again a lot of people aren't going to make it this far into the video they kind of no. already got the value you know back here yep you but know what dan overall really good <laughs> i was just really looking at job. the uh i was just looking at the number of views in the video and you can, the video particularly got a lot of views so kudos to them Man. yeah uh i remember looking at this channel last time being really impressed with uh you know the the fan base they've built up they get they get quite a few views on some of their videos and i think a lot of good signals as to what's kind of working what's not so yeah i would i would keep it up and uh definitely you know keep just working on those little improvements every single video okay but yeah good stuff another question dan the video that we just looked at it from three months ago uh did they direct us to that particular video in the form or yes yeah uh, -huh. uh not the form the link they sent was for this specific video oh okay so I thought they, they wanted us to specifically look at that one. Gotcha. So cool. All right. So that was the first channel that submitted on the non-gaming form. There are two forms. One of them is a gaming form, and we are going to jump over to that right now. Um, it is going to be uh, Aubrey Angst. And they said they're looking for advice for a previous live stream variety creator. They were on Twitch. They're altering their content now for YouTube. They have a toddler plus a job, so no time to live stream. I assume they mean, this is a, you can't put a lot of text in here, so I assume they mean this is a pivot for them just in their life. Things have changed. They can't live stream anymore. So now they're trying to just do what they can on YouTube, which is cool. So I'm hoping we can offer uh, a little bit of advice here. And I feel like I should just click the latest video. I looked at this channel before we got started and saw that they were playing a few different games, some Sims 3, some Ooblets. Um, and those might be the only two after I'm scrolling here again. And I would say with these communities, probably a lot of crossover. So that's cool. Uh, let's just take a look at the latest one. Hello, Aubrey Angst here and welcome back to day 20 of our Ooblets Let's Play. I see a bristle bud that I have to get. Look at how cute he is and it's gleamy. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Okay. Um, so 
So 20 seconds in, I already have some thoughts. Um, I do too. Yeah, I, I thought this was like a nice intro in terms of just like, welcome back to our Ooblets Let's Play. So that tells me right away, like, okay, this is a Let's Play. This is an ongoing series that you're doing. And, you know, audio quality is good, all that stuff. You you did one thing that I would have loved to see uh, cranked up to 11. You said, there's a bristle bud that I'm really excited to get. And immediately my eyes started wandering around looking at all the names of all the Ooblets. But it is right here. When you said there's a bristle bud I'm really excited about getting, that's a really good moment to take the screen and zoom right in on that so I don't have to look for it. Um, so I know that it represents more work because now you're going to find yourself doing that throughout your videos. You're going to find little things that you're trying to draw your audience's attention to. And you're going to be like, oh, I guess that's another opportunity. And as you do that, you're going to realize, gosh, for a 30-minute video, this is going to take me a really long time. Um, which would be why my next tip might be to try and cut down on the length of these a little bit. Just general Let's Play videos are already really hard to, you know, get out there in the first place. And if you're going to do a lot of edits to try and get them up to a, a higher standard, that's going to take a lot of your time. So you might think about cutting even more out and then starting to do your like, you know, heavier duty edits. Um, what did you think? I think it's going to be one of those uh, good cop, bad cop days. So damn, just a good cop. That means Viper got to come in and be the bad cop. That's fine. I'm, I'm good with that. Um, Number one, you said, welcome back to day 20. At that point, you lost me. Day 20? That means I got to go watch the rest of the 19 days before day 20? I, I, I tell you guys all the time, man, you got to make these videos stand apart from everything else that you're doing. Otherwise, you kind of you could potentially overwhelm a viewer. So the moment you say, welcome back to day 20, I'm like, oh, man. And then the other thing that's really just a pet peeve of mine, and I'm pretty sure other people in the chat might agree, you start the video with us looking at this menu screen? No, 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 no. I need some gameplay when I click on the video. I don't, I don't want to be looking at this menu screen, man. Like, you, you can do that on your own time. Don't do that on Viper time. Do that on your own time, okay? When, when Viper clicks on the video, I need to see gameplay immediately. Or something. This little menu screen is not, it's not doing it for me. So I just need you to be a little, be a little bit quicker about getting into the video. And do not make me feel like I got to watch the whole rest of the series. Let me be able to enjoy this video on its own without feeling like I need to go back and watch the other 19. Let's let's give them a little bit of a pass only because I'm only saying that because they, they were pretty upfront with us there. This is YouTube. I feel like based on this comment is kind of new for them. Right. So in fairness, they may not know our, our general advice of like starting with a day 20, but I was getting there. You know, you're not wrong. I think <laughs> I think having title and thumbnail that that was going to be a whole nother part of the program i think for this channel because if you're just coming from twitch uh there's there's a lot of things that i think just channel review wise i'd want to catch you up on um just to help out a little bit so yeah uh going off of what you said about day 20 it's okay that it's day 20 it's okay that you've done 19 other videos it's just that when a new viewer kind of comes in it kind of is it's that worry we have for you that they might turn around and leave because they're like yep like viper said like oh are there 19 of these am i going to know what's going on should i watch those 19 chances are they don't need to watch those 19 videos so we like to make sure that if you're doing like a concurrent let's play series try and remember the new viewers and make sure every single video caters to them if they don't want to go back and watch they don't need to because you don't draw a lot of attention to the fact that it's day 20 you just kind of get into it you know yeah again uh, going back to what i said before on the live stream if you put like part numbers or episode numbers in the video, you can put them at the end of the title like you did. I, I'm a, I'm completely okay with you putting day 20 at the end of your title, even in the description, put that stuff in the description. So if somebody goes down to the description and read that, fine. But not in the first 10 seconds of the video, welcome back to day 20. Don't, don't do that to me. Don't do that to me. <laughs> uh, so another thing I was going to say, just uh, title wise and then thumbnail, it looks like the bristle bud is here and you talk about the bristle bud immediately which is great it seems like a really good opportunity to change kind of the pitch of this video a little bit and and talk about like you know if you could go the how-to route like how to get you know a i think you said glimmering bristle bud or i can't believe i got this or um you know the hardest ooblet to get or something like that you know what i mean just just a very clear title that tells me about something i'm gonna learn or a struggle that you're having or something like that um He's so cute and spiky is is not bad, but I think it's still really vague. It doesn't really tell me what this 30 minute video is going to really get into. So being really upfront in your title and your thumbnail could really, really help get uh, more clicks on these. 
Uh, so yeah, I think those are our general tips. And that's just only like the first few seconds. I am seeing something else here that I, I may advise against. Let's watch a little bit longer. Um, we get that bristle bud, I hope. And I think we can probably get, what, the fear mo? The so that's a very long animated intro. Um, yet another, I would say, invitation for people to click off the video. No, 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 they didn't. <laughs> Dan, tell me I did not just see that, Dan. No, they, no, 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 not, not after the 30 second menu screen. And then after the 30 second menu screen, you go into a countdown thing with your, oh, oh man, Dan. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Dan. I think go, part go ahead, of this Dan. is. Part of this is coming from ahead, if you if you're live streaming, one of the things you'll have during your live stream is a countdown screen. A lot of people have them because they are just setting up and they're trying to get people in the door. And so they'll go and they'll turn on their stream. They'll have a countdown screen. They'll go make coffee or something like that. That doesn't really translate to YouTube videos, though. Um, YouTube videos are on demand. So people are just sitting down there. They already are ready to watch and that you don't need to worry about them getting in the door. Dan, what? The countdown screen is at the very beginning, not in the middle of the video. Well, I know. I think this was, I'm saying, I think this was a carryover from their live stream. I think they were trying to make these videos feel like their old live streams did on Twitch. I'm, I'm making a lot of assumptions based on the comment they left, basically. Gotcha. Okay. So I think I would get rid of it. Makes um, it's, it's just, again, uh, that, that next thing that you're kind of putting in the way of the content. I came here for the adorable spiky bristle bud. You kind of teased it a little bit, but it's just like, a pretty long intro screen and then we actually get into the video um so i think what i'm saying boils down to just more editing in general like to try to make the video even more concise try not to treat it so much like a live stream because these days people people like to just get right to the point yeah and before people think i'm trying to roast the creator i like the audio quality i think the audio quality is very solid on her presentation of this video um, obviously, she's very passionate about what she's going to play today, the particular game. So I appreciate the passion and the excitement that she had for finding the characters and, and presenting them to us, the audience. But yeah, we got we got to get some editing in here quick. So that's uh, I think that's our just initial thoughts. Um, overall, I, I think uh, leaving one platform and coming to another one is not an easy thing to do. Uh, so. Yeah, hopefully, hopefully, uh, some of the things we've talked about have been uh, helpful to you. Let's see. Another thing I'm just looking at, just going into channel review mode for just a moment, is your titles kind of have this consistent theme of just kind of vague vagueness all around. Father and Son Bonding Time, Midnight Sun Challenge, Episode 24. Uh, you are getting very sleepy. Ooblets Day 18, and and none of these titles that I'm seeing really tell us what the video is about like i was talking about earlier so this is why we're seeing 16 views 30 views you know you've, you're kind of catering right now to a core audience of viewers who maybe have been watching you back in the day and we're not doing enough to attract new audience um sims 3 believe it or not still actually a very popular game so if they're if you're doing a midnight sun challenge i i think I think I would look at some of the other channels doing that challenge and see how they're titling their videos. Take a look at their thumbnails and see what you can do to improve across the board because the packaging for your content, I think needs to be leveled up here so we can get even more clicks. So if you combine that with tighter edits in your intros, I think you're going to see some pretty good results. Indeed. All right. Okay. Um, before we move on, Dan, I need a quick aside uh, with, with you in the chat. I, I just got a question uh, about live streaming and countdown screen. So... I, I know uh, people do things differently on Twitch and it, some things make a little bit more sense on Twitch and things like that. But on YouTube, I personally, I'm not a fan of the live, the countdown screen for live streams. I have had situations where I would click on a live stream and I would see a countdown stream and I would immediately click off and then I would forget that there's a live stream going on because I'll I be doing something else. So my question to you, Dan, and everybody else here in the chat, let me know. How do you guys feel about live uh, countdown screens on live streams at the very beginning? You know, when you click on the live stream and you have that the, the, the timer that counts down to when the stream begins. Do you guys, are you okay with that? Do you like that? Do you feel like that's needed on YouTube? Dan, what are your thoughts on this? What are you guys' thoughts on this? Well, 
So for the channel review stream we do on Tuesday, Rob has always had some kind of big intro sequence that that plays at the start of the stream. And that's always been our way of kind of getting people in the door, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I, when I used to stream on Twitch, I did something similar. I, I had like a five minute countdown. So I would start the stream and I would literally go get everything ready. I'd get my water, get my coffee, get, you know, get settled in, um, whatever I needed to do. You know, sometimes I would just be like, finishing up my last minute notes, just all the little bullet points on a sticky note I wanted to make sure I talked about for the stream. So I'm just like doing everything in that five minutes and I'm, I'm, I'm glancing up at the view count every time and I'm just watching the number go up. But on YouTube, like the longer I streamed on YouTube, the more I realized that that time was kind of not really helpful because usually what happens is if you schedule your stream beforehand, you'll see people already waiting for you before you start which is what happened today, for example. So on Wednesdays, like I don't, I never built for the Wednesday stream a countdown sequence. So I just pop right on and start talking. And I do that because a whole bunch of you are already here waiting. And we're gonna talk a whole bunch before we start anyway, because we're gonna tell you about what the stream is like and we're gonna in introduce everybody and blah, 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 blah. So I, on YouTube especially, am personally against them. On Twitch, they make a little more sense because there was nothing indicating you were about to go live. You just kind of have to go live and people start to get notifications in. Um, so yeah, that's my my way of uh, looking at it. To answer some of you guys and comments in the chat, I agree. I can almost deal with it if it's not too long. If it's anything over 30 seconds, I'm, I'm out. <laughs> like, I'm probably going to forget your streaming. But at 30 seconds or less, I can probably deal with that. But some some people have like five-minute countdown. And I'm like, oh, hell no. Absolutely not. Yeah. I, I've had really long ones in the past. And they, you know, I only did it because a, on that other platform, it was not easy to get people in the door in the beginning, you had to get the notification out there first that you actually went live. So on YouTube, they already do that for you. If you've scheduled, as long as you've scheduled your stream ahead of time, if you're doing that, you don't need the countdown sequence at all, in my opinion. All right. Thank I you. like our intro on Tuesdays though. I think it, it has oh, no, like, like it music too. and it gets, it gets us in the mood to audit some channels, but. Thank cool. you all. Appreciate all you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, while we're here, before we go to the next channel, why don't we really quick address the Super Chat? Uh, we try to answer your questions via Super Chat. We don't sell channel reviews or video reviews via Super Chat. Um, but if you have a question, uh, we'll try and pick it up. So it says, what is the best way to use my long videos to make shorts? That's a great question. This is a topic that uh, we're actually hoping to cover here real soon on the channel. Uh, so one of the things you can do is take really cool moments and, and clip them out of your long form video, but you should do more than that. I don't want you to upload that as just a short. What you should do is consider the short viewer, keep them in your mind. And when you make those clips, make an intro that you make after the fact. So you have the clip in front of you, you're editing it. You've taken a clip from your long form video and you're like, this looks good, but it's missing some context. So what you'll do is you'll say, check out this incredible headshot that I got. If it's like a gaming video, right? Like you're, you're playing call of duty or something. Um, then it kind of like transitions into the actual audio that was captured during the, the long form video. Like always be thinking of the short viewer, make sure that you give them context. For example, I'll give you another example. We're streaming right now, but I have a second camera set up and I have it set up in case I want to capture clips. This is something new I'm trying. So, if I decide to put this clip up as a short, I'm going to make a separate intro for it, explaining hey, we got this question during a live stream, blah, 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 blah. See? Boop. I'll capture it right now. I don't know if I'm going to use it, but. <laughs> uh, so thank you for your uh, super chat. And uh, yeah, if, if we get any more, we will uh, we will see if we can address them. Okay. We have more channels that we've pre-selected before we get into random draw here. Uh, this next one is a non-gaming channel. It's called Salt and Zest, and they're struggling with their click-through rate and retention. So we take a look at the channel here. It is a food channel. I would say these thumbnails, photography-wise, look really nice. Um, just going off of the click-through rate comment, generally speaking, I think if this was a channel review stream, we would probably tell you the text in your thumbnail isn't really needed. Like food thumbnails don't really need all this extra stuff. Mm -hmm. Just kind of make the food the star. Yep. Excuse me, but uh, it's not channel review day, and we did we did look at some cooking channels yesterday, so do be sure to check that out. Uh, let's dive into the latest video and see what we can do about the retention. Hello, everyone. I'm Cassandra Hammerstone, and today we're making my recipe for loaded potato soup. This is a simple soup that tastes like roasted garlic mashed potatoes 
with everyone's favorite loaded baked potato toppings. It's simple and comforting and easy to prepare. Here's everything you'll need. We'll start by melting two tablespoons of good quality butter. Add the onions and a pinch of salt to sweat them until they're translucent. You don't want them to brown at all. And if they start to get any color. There's 30 seconds. You look like uh, you could eat. I am impressed. That's what I'm looking like. I like that. You know, it's like when we are auditing these tutorial channels or in these tutorial videos and different things like that. Number one, you have to be really precise about how you explain to the viewer how to get the result that you are trying to get or you're showing them how to get. And this person right here, this lady has it on the nail. She had all the ingredients laid out in, in picture. Usually like, it's funny because usually when I see things like this, I'll just do like a whole list of the ingredients. But no, she had the actual ingredients, the actual, actual real life ingredients out there and it had their names out there in a little diagram. It kind of like what you see on the Apple Watch. But uh, that was amazing. And then she immediately goes into how you do it. And then she was carefully, meticulously explaining how you start off with this recipe and how you make this dish. I like it. The only critique that I have for this particular video is that I kind of felt like her intro into the dish and talking about it went on just a tad bit too long. But yeah. other than that, excellent. Love it. Love it. Love it. Yeah, I thought the intro was a little bit long. I agree there. And then one thing I noticed was, and I was looking for this because we've seen this with some cooking channels in the past. I wanted to just see if at any point they were going to talk about how much of all of these things we have in front of us, because when you're cooking certain recipes, it matters. So th there's two things. So we have, this is everything you're going to need. It's and as you said, they, they put up the diagram here, which is yeah. great. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the next scene. Here's everything you'll need. We'll start by melting two tablespoons of two tablespoons of butter. I'm like, okay, got it. So they are going to start listing the amount of each ingredient just with the, throughout the video. So I wasn't going to say anything, but then good quality butter, add the onions and a add the onions. And now I'm like, well, wait, how much onion? So I am still kind of missing that. And if I'm following along at home, I, I can see from here that it looks like maybe that's half an onion. If it's a small onion, maybe it's a quarter of an onion. It probably isn't a whole onion. And, and that's that's what's kind of missing here for me. Uh, if the videos are about following you to actually know how to make the soup, I need to know when it counts, how much of what. It looks like that's a very specific amount of chicken stock, a very specific amount of cream. Um, the roasted garlic, I can kind of tell how much that is. Uh, chicken base, it doesn't look like much at all. So certain things, like pinch of salt is fine. I think saying pinch of salt in a recipe is totally fine. But there's certain things in here that like, it's going to become important to know how much of that ingredient is needed. So that was my big critique. Um, I also saw a couple of comments in the chat. Um, a couple of people think this is a robot voice and AI voices are getting very sophisticated. They are getting better. Um, but if it sounds too robotic, uh, we've, we've taken this poll in chat a number of times. If it sounds too robotic, at least by the opinions of people here, a lot of people are ready to click off the video if you're using robotic voices throughout the whole thing. Like you can get away with it for little things like a little TikTok or something like that. But if if you're doing like a guided four minute long recipe presentation, like or cooking presentation, it's really tough to follow when <laughs> when the voice sounds like it's just an AI voice. Now, I didn't hear that personally. It sounded like they just recorded a really nice, clean voiceover after the fact. But I kind of wonder if, you know, there, there are people out there who make the mistake, you know. So I thought I'd bring that up as well. But I don't really know. If you are using an AI voice, it might be that people are picking up on it. But it's, it's hard for me to say. I didn't I didn't really pick up on it this time. So if it is an AI voice, it's a really, really good one. No, that, that's not an AI voice. She's just very, very good at uh, giving her instructions. Yeah, I mean, we have a comment here. I always click off of AI voices. Um, so yeah, that's. I didn't think this was an AI voice, but I did see a couple people wonder if it was. So uh, I thought I'd bring that up as well, just in case you're getting comments that are similar. I don't know. Um, Retention-wise, I can't imagine why your retention would not be where you want it because a, everything else is working in this video. It really is. The, like you said, like the intro is a little bit long, but not to the point where I think people are going to get frustrated and leave. Um, you're just kind of presenting a finished product and now you're going to tell me how to make it. It's, it's, it's not even a four minute video. It's less than 
it's less than four. It's three minutes and sixteen seconds. Um, so yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of curious as to I be I would love to see what those metrics are because I don't think there's a lot more tweaks you could do to try and fix that. But I'm not in the space a lot, so try to look at similar channels and see how they're editing their their intros. See you know see what they're doing in their videos to kind of keep their retention up. Uh, but I, I worry without looking at your metrics, I don't know. Maybe you're holding yourself to a really high standard. Like maybe you're getting 40, 50 percent, and you're like, well, that's terrible. But I think for this length of video, that's actually not bad. You know, yeah, we all want more. But um, if people are dropping off like 20, 30 percent into the video, like they're they're not sticking around very long, that that I'd worry about. But if you're getting, you know, 40, 50 percent, I think that's pretty good. You, all plenty of room for improvement, but nothing I would be really concerned about, you know, personally. But yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, thumbnails, I think, are you know sometimes a, a little more complicated than they need to be. And uh, yeah, just a few tweaks to your videos. I, I think these are really, really good, really strong. Yep. All right. Next channel we've pre-selected here. Uh, it's Mick Vincent. Their tutorials perform well, they say, but videos where they're reviewing projects have low retention, about 20%. They usually perform well views-wise topic matters so they're saying i get good views but people don't stick around very long on these uh project review videos so let's take a look at some of the stuff they're doing they are a programming channel they're teaching people a program with something called scratch and uh they have some videos here they're doing very very well like their tutorials getting a lot of views they're teaching concepts and uh i'm trying to see these review ones if any of those are like really clear here let me see unbelievable scratch games is 400,000 views look at that make a start menu huh so I, I don't know which ones they're referring to that have lower retention let's let's try this one though it's a very uh I would say Mr. Beast-esque kind of thumbnail for for a computer programming channel it's kind of funny <laughs> that someone would go this route uh, for a thumbnail. What is wrong with Explore page nowadays? Like, I just randomly opened Scratch and clicked on Explore, and I saw this. Bruh. Let's see if these games are actually as bad as they look from outside. Let's get started. Yeah, let's get started. Okay, so... Let's see this. Okay, 1,130 assets. This should be good. If it is not, I'll be disappointed. Like, I am already disappointed. But Okay, let's see this one. Okay, I got some thoughts. <clears throat> All right. Um, no, I... Now, this could be true or it could not be true. I don't know, but it looks... It kind of looks like, to me, this audio has been dubbed. It doesn't really look like uh, or sound like it coming directly from his lip, the sound. I know I could be wrong about that, but it just, it just seems like it's dubbed to me, but I could be wrong. The other thing that I have a problem with, there's way too much going on in the first 30 seconds. There's way too many edits. Now, I know we talk about uh, keeping a viewer's attention and, and making sure you have edits every 10 seconds uh, as it relates to pattern interrupt, but I think the creator took it a little bit too far. Uh, sometimes you got to dumb it down a little bit for the viewers and just keep it as simple as possible while still being engaging. So... I think there are a little bit too many edits. And like I said, the audio just seems like it sounds like it's been dubbed or it looks like it's been dubbed. I don't know. But what do you think, Dan? Uh, I didn't notice that, uh, but I wasn't paying too close of attention. I was, I'm with you on the way too many edits and that's where I was getting distracted. Um, Cause they, the, here's like, here's what happened for me. They have these reactions and they spend a lot of time on their facial reactions to something they're looking at, but they never show us enough of what they're looking at. I, I can never get my eyes focused enough to see like what you're reacting to because you cut away from it so fast. Let's see if these games are actually as bad as they look from outside. Let's get started. Yeah, let's get started. Okay, so... So like I saw the, the Splatoon 3 logo, but it, it like before I could really figure out, oh, wait, 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 what am I looking at? It's gone. And that happened throughout the 30 seconds of intro. So that that's where I was like really, really distracted. Uh, and I'm worried just because we got about 31 seconds in. It was happening a lot. I'm worried that if you're having issues with retention, that's probably where it is. 
um, you're trying to have these jokes and these reactions pay off, but people aren't really following you. So Dan made a very, very uh, uh, good point when we before we started auditing this video, this channel. He said the thumbnail looks a lot like a Mr. Beast thumbnail. And I yeah, kind of feel is, like this is the Mr. Beast thumbnail. Yeah, that's the Mr. Beast thumbnail. <laughs> but the problem is that the content itself is kind of taking inspiration from Mr. Beast. And in some content niches, you can get away with that. But in something like tutorials, that doesn't work. You, you can't do the Mr. Beast thing in tutorial videos and things like this. It just it makes no sense. People are trying to learn stuff from your videos. And when you're cutting away every five seconds, trying to emulate Mr. Beast in a tutorial like setting, you're not doing the viewer any favors. So I think this might be a case of this creator trying to go outside themselves a little bit too much for entertainment when they're actually in reality trying to teach the viewer something, but they're not giving the viewer enough time to take what they're trying to teach them. Yeah, just on the topic of the thumbnail, and I, I want to jump on that point too, but on topic of the thumbnail, while while you did alter it, it you still didn't quite make it your own. You know, like upon closer inspection, oh, okay, it's you putting your face over Mr. Beast, and then you've changed the background. Mm -hmm. um and like you said you made it look like a mr beast challenge style video but when you get in it's it's a video about like a programming program like uh, you know a, a, would scratch be a programming program i don't know sorry i'm not very <laughs> technical uh it it's not a good fit even if people mm -hmm. get it even if people understand what you're doing I would say it's not the greatest fit and that could also be hurting your retention people get in and they thought they were clicking one thing and they ended up with something else. Like when you go to Mr. Beast's channel, we're, we're deviating right now. When you go to Mr. Beast's channel and you see this thumbnail, the reason it is him frozen is because he went to Antarctica. Like there's a reason for why it's it's him with icicles hanging off of his hands and his nose. It's It's because he went to a place that is cold. It doesn't make much sense in the context of I'm going to do this programming challenge. You know, uh, I think you could take inspiration from these types of creators and what they're doing. But I want to see you looking miserable in front of your computer. I don't want to see you <laughs> just uh, your face on someone else's thumbnail. That doesn't help anybody. It doesn't it doesn't really explain what it is like if you're doing a programming challenge. Own it. Own the fact that it's a programming challenge. Don't don't try and go out of your way to make it look like something it's not because it deceives people in a way that hurts you you know not not what is a, wrong with it not to say it's it's not clever i i i thought it was kind of clever and you are getting a lot of views but by your own admission your your retention isn't good so i think we've identified two really important things here your edits are way too quick to the point where your jokes are not landing you can have quick edits but if it's going to be like this where you're trying to get our attention to focus on something and you're not going to give us time to focus on it. You're not going to give the breathing room to focus on it. I'm clicking off because I've already missed 10 jokes. I don't know what's going on. And, or it's the fact that, Oh, I thought this was like some kind of like five minute Mr. B style challenge video, but they're, they're just kind of doing a programming thing. You yeah. could be deceiving the viewers. People that are watching your content are probably not watching Mr. B. So I'm just going to put that out there. <laughs> there, there is always that. Yeah. So that would be uh, th just one of your videos we looked at. And it has, you know, from 11 days ago, you know, quite a few views compared to some of these other ones. This is, to me, a much better thumbnail. Is this the ultimate button script for Scratch? Click me. Like, this makes sense to me. You you are going to teach someone how to make a button using this, this programming language. Total sense. Um, you know, how to record and share Scratch projects. Record projects. Like... All of your other thumbnails are really straightforward to me. But for some reason, like this one, this one just didn't, it's not lining up with my expectations. All right. We'll go to the next channel, which is Homekeeping Channel. They do cleaning and organizing. They said their videos have been struggling the last nine months to reach 100 views. They used to do that within a week. Not sure what they're doing wrong. Things are worse now. All right. So when I read that comment, I kind of thought this might be someone kind of hoping for more of a broad channel review, um, which we could get into a little bit, but we do want to focus on your actual videos. Um, so we can take a look at the thumbnail and the title of a video and kind of see if the click pays off, see what's going on there. Um, but I think if you're noticing your videos are just not getting the views that you're expecting, it 
might be time to kind of look at your topics and and look at some other channels in this space and see if you can maybe align yourself a little bit better about or with the expectations of like this audience that you're trying to target. Uh, but uh, the latest one is called how to hand wash and machine wash your bras doing laundry. Today, we're going to talk about our bras and cleaning them. Now, there's been many discussions about this when it comes to cleaning our bras. So today we're going to take a look at hand washing versus machine wash and which one's best. So 15 seconds, and I kind of feel like you almost said the same thing twice. I'm about to say, did, did we get a double intro? I think we got a double intro. Yeah, I think I what I would have done is had the video start and go, hand washing versus machine washing. How should you wash your bras? We're going to talk about that today. Intro done. Less than five seconds, just boom. Just blurt that out and get right into the content. Or are they both equal? When it comes to hand washing your bras, it's quick and simple. All you need to do is fill a tub or a sink with warm water. Add in some mild liquid detergent. Place in your bras in the water and leave to soak for 15 minutes. This allows the detergent... So this is this then that kind of just gets into the tutorial, right? Um, which is nothing wrong with that at all. I think the intro could have been shorter. And yeah. I, it's I know it sounds like, okay, well, what else could I could I do to improve and we're not going to watch the entire video but it if your intro is getting people to click off then they're not going to come back to watch the rest so it's really really important that you have a really strong hook and your click pays off right so how to hand wash a machine wash your bras so an intro with that really short hook that i mentioned at the beginning that would be i think a really good way to pay off the click but without taking too much time it's just gonna boom spit out the hook and then go yeah, I don't really have, like, like Dan said, I don't really have m many uh, issues with the intro besides you saying the same thing twice in the first 15 seconds. So you might want to, like, Dan said, shorten it up. Uh, the thing that I am I saw immediately just by looking at your channel was the titles. Your titles need some work. Um, You got two titles and some of them, and that just, that's just not going to be good for anybody. So um, for some of your titles here, like like this one, you have a, at the end of the title, you have doing laundry. I don't think you need that. I mean, hand, how to hand wash machine or how to hand wash a machine washer bra done that's the title that's it you don't need doing laundry and you have the secondary title at the end of a lot of your videos and you do not need a secondary title at the end of your title so i would say uh try to limit or cut that out completely yeah and i was gonna say the thumbnail is is very basic and uh in a way that in a way that is not really clearly demonstrating what you're trying to say um so it, the word or is in red text which makes it kind of hard to read red text on thumbnails never does super well um in most cases uh I think this would have benefited from a line in between the two images because you have a lot of like white here and then you got a lot of white here because of the laundry machine. So it almost looks like this is one image at just a quick glance. It takes me a minute to adjust and see that, oh no, it's a split screen. So when you're editing your thumbnails, I would do a split screen and the word or is not what you want here. You want versus. Versus is like this universal thing. Everyone knows exactly what you're saying without reading the title. If you, if you do a good enough job in your thumbnail, a versus thumbnail makes it crystal clear. No one even has to read your title now. They know what you're trying to say. Um, it, and the title of the video is Hand Wash versus Machine Wash, right? The problem is, I know this is literally on the left how you would hand wash the bra. You let it soak. But you you have to be really, really clear in your in your thumbnail, right? You want to communicate the message. It's okay if you embellish a little bit and take your hand and a sponge or something and show you like cleaning it, right? Like even though that's not maybe physically how you're going to do it, it's okay. You're just trying to get people's brains thinking. Hand wash the bra. So use your, put your hands in there versus machine wash. And what's ironic is that on the machine wash side, your hand appears. And now I can't even see that it's a laundry machine. Whereas, so, so on the right side, I think you should have zoomed out and shown the whole laundry machine, you know? So then you put versus. So we have we have a bra being hand washed versus a laundry machine, and and already we get it. Maybe maybe it's not as realistic because of the hand washing thing, but it's okay because we get it, and that's the thing. People are not going to take the time to think about what's in your thumbnail. They're not going to take the time to do that. They they need that clear message as soon as it hits their home feed. If they don't get it, they keep scrolling, and that's what we want to avoid. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, um. The other thing I would do, if if your how-to titles are not cutting it anymore, um, 
ditch how to and and save those characters for something again more clear um if you're gonna do a versus thumbnail with no other text other than vs for versus now you can do um hand wash versus machine wash hand wash versus machine wash how do you clean your bras you know how should you clean your bras again just a more catchy title it gets straight to the point um it, it gets that verses in there i think that's just all all around a more exciting pitch for the video than what we have now um video review wise other than what i said about the intro i like this video i think they did a really good job i think they took really clean shots i think it's really high quality i think the sound quality is good uh, i i think they're they're showing something that is going to be valuable to the viewers that they're trying to market this to so really great work overall i i just think it's a matter of your packaging honestly based on the question we got from them which is you know they're not getting the views that they used to get so those are our pre-selected channels um thank you for your submissions we are going to now start picking your channels randomly but we do have just a couple of super chats here uh that we want to talk about first before we get into random draw the first one is from xbox nation when is the right time to reach out to a sponsor um, Viper, this depends on a lot of factors. It's There's no clear answer to this, that's for sure. Ooh. So, just by the wording of the question, when, to re when is the right time to reach out to a sponsor, I'm going to make the assumption that you're looking to get paid for your content. And like Dan said, there's a lot to that. Um, the main thing is that you have to be able to offer the brand some type of value. Um, whether that be in exposure, or whether that be in views, or whatever the case may be, or whether that be in your ability to sell whatever product or service that they're offering to your audience, you got you to be able to offer some type of value. If you don't have any value to offer or if you don't know how to properly understand how much value you can provide to a brand, you're not getting paid anything. I think a lot of creators, especially when they first start off uh, on their creative journeys, are looking to get paid. No, you're not getting paid when you're first starting off because you have not established that, 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 that part yet. You have not done enough to get paid. What I always tell creators, especially newer creators, is that in the beginning, do not be afraid to do things for free because doing things for free will get you paid down the line. Because once you have established that relationship with the brand, then when you when your audience grows and your influence grows, then you have some work to show that, okay, we've done this work in the past. And I've sold stuff from you when I was a newer creator because I, I, I presented you in front of my audience. Now you're a bigger audience. Now you have something of value to offer to the brand. And then they will consider paying you. But when you're first starting out, don't be afraid to work for free for a little bit. Just so you get your foot in the door, get that experience. And actually some data, get a body of work going on, get some, accumulate some data so you could take that to your future brands and then get paid. Yeah, I've been thinking about this a lot myself lately. And I'm kind of wondering like, you know, what, what's kind of stopped me if this was something I was interested in doing, what would be the first thing I need to do? And I realized one, one mistake I made as a small creator and, and I'll just give you this right now. So you don't make the same mistake. I did not do a good job of keeping a list of the types of brands that I would like to work with. Um, but that's important because there are products and services that you use every single day that you probably take for granted. And a lot of those companies will set aside marketing budget to market with creators. And you don't have to have hundreds of thousands of subscribers to get brand deals. You can you can be a micro influencer and be involved in those campaigns. You might not make as much as the bigger channels, but you can certainly get in there. Um, but like Viper said, you you got to offer that value. So you will have to cut your teeth a bit. You will have to kind of grow, but there's no number. I can't say, oh, 10,000 subscribers because that's just not true. There's been cases of creators with under a thousand subscribers catering to a very specific audience who have had really successful brand deals. So I'm not going to sit here and, and say much more than that because I'm certainly not the expert on this, but we have talked to somebody who is, and if you have vidIQ Max, you can go back and watch the session with Justin Moore, uh, who is a brand expert, a, you know, a, a brand deal savant. And he spent an hour at IQ Max just giving people all the tea when it comes to starting to actually pitch people. And and he covers this. He covers when to, when the right time is to start, you know, reaching out to brands. So just one more reason to join IQ Max, which is linked down below. It's our group coaching program. Uh, there's a private Discord full of creators just like you that you have 24-7 access to. You'll also have access to our coaches that are in there answering questions. Um, creators at all sizes of their journey from tens of subscribers to millions of subscribers are hanging out in VidIQ Max. So just a quick plug for that. Um, 
you are able to see all of the past sessions that you've already missed. They're all recorded. They're all saved for you. So every every two weeks, this service stays the same price, but gets more valuable to you because they just keep adding selection for you to peruse. And one of those is the Justin Moore um, course on brand deals. It's an hour long. Um, highly, highly recommend it because it covers this. Uh, and yeah, you can you can take your channel from hobby to business. Hopefully, that's that's our goal. But yeah, cool. Uh, thank you for your super chat and then allowing me to use it to plug one of our services that I love. <laughs> Next super chat. Think Media Podcast channel just got hacked. <laughs> yeah, I reached I, out to them so that they're aware. Okay, you they're aware. I I, I don't want to look at a super chat and just automatically assume like, oh, okay. But uh, thanks for looking out. And uh, yes, thank you, Viper. I, I suppose they have been made aware. Um, thanks for sharing your knowledge with us. You are very welcome. Thank you for uh, the super chat. Uh, how do you keep viewers engaged after the intro? Great question. Um, I would say if you have a strong intro and you have a strong hook and you are delivering on the value of the content after people clicked, it should come easy. The hook is the hardest part. You're basically telling people, hey, like, here's what this video is about and here's why you should watch it. Then dive into the content. You know, don't waste any time after the intro. Just, just start, start the video. Uh, I'd say that's the best way. What, what about you? Um, you got to provide value. <laughs> I'm going to go back to what I just said about the whole sponsor thing. You got to provide value. You have to deliver on a click. So why did they click on your video? And you just have to keep delivering and keep uh, engaging in such a way that the viewer knows that, okay, I clicked on the right video. I'm going to get the information I, I came for. I'm going to learn what I wanted to learn. And as long as you can provide that value and, and deliver on that click, you should be no, should be no problem. You should have be you're good to go. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, so there you go. Uh, there's that. And then what should I do to get more views on my channel? Make videos that people want to watch. And I know that advice is super, super frustrating, especially when you're first starting out and you ask people like us that and we tell you, we just keep saying the same thing. But that's what it's all about. Um, we have a lot of videos on this channel that basically help with this exact problem. Um, how do you get more views? It's, it's all about... Who are you making content for? Because it shouldn't be about how do I get more views? It should be about how do the viewers that I want to speak to get value from me? How can I, what can I do for them? So I would sit down and try and figure out who your ideal viewer is, because it's going to be a specific type of person. You figure out that persona, you, you make up a person and your goal is to make sure this person is the same person every single time you upload a video. They're always coming back. They are your super fan. It doesn't matter what you upload because you got their back. They're always going to watch what you make. But if you're making stuff one day about your dog and another day about a video game that you like and another day about cooking, you're not thinking about one person anymore. You're trying to get someone over here in the cooking space. You're trying to get someone over here in the gaming space. You're trying to get a pet fanatic. It's not working. Try to cater your content to one specific type of viewer. So figure out the things that you love that you can speak to and then do that research. Who out there would want to hear from me about this topic? Oh, no, not the dinner. You didn't burn the dinner. Listen to us. Oh, oh man, that's not good. Oh, that's right. What? What's going on? The next super chat. <laughs> she, burned, she burned dinner, Dan. She burned oh, dinner. no. Oh, <laughs> oh. See, well, are you recording though? <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully we provided you some value. <laughs> Homekeeping channel. I'm so sorry. Um, oh man. I I hope it's salvageable, and uh, I hope you're recording. <laughs> it is content. Um, thank you everybody for your super chats. Uh, we will get back to those momentarily, but we have a whole bunch of you who've submitted your channel, and you're hoping to get seen. So, we have a solution for that. It's the claw. Was it echoing? No. No. Oh, it's because I didn't have it on. It's the claw. <laughs> that is that is our solution to this problem. We're going to pick your channels randomly via claw. So everybody, put some claw emojis in, in the chat. If you can't find one, use a crap. And uh, we are going to pick from the gaming forum first, which has almost 300 responses on it. Oh, well, I haven't picked yet. I haven't done anything yet, claw. Relax. <laughs> Pick a random name, thought. Like, what are we doing out here? Okay. 
198. Okay, so we're going to go to the gaming forum. This is how it works. 98. All right. And this is, this is how you get picked. For anyone asking, how do I get picked? This is how you do it. So just submit on the forum below. Sit back. Relax. We clear it every single week. We have so, an actual crap emoji for the claw. Are you serious right now? Wow, that's new. It's well, it, YouTube had a. I, I remember YouTube having a crab emoji. <laughs> wow, okay. <then. laughs> I just didn't know if there's any other claw type of. I'm like, if you can't find a claw, use a crab because I know that was there. <laughs> okay, it is a Minecraft channel. It's never frosted. 341 subscribers. Um, loving the thumbnails here. We're not doing a video a channel review. They're reviewing a video review. I took over an entire country using snowmen on this SMP, I'm guessing, server. Let's see. Snow golems are often an overlooked addition to Minecraft, and they are rarely used in people's worlds. But I'm here to make a change to this by doing what any normal person would do, which is taking over an entire country using snowmen. Before we get into the video, though, I would just like to say that I do have a Discord server, which I am very active in, so maybe consider joining. Link is in the description. So how was I going to go about doing this? You see, the country I had my eye on was Jamaica, mostly because it was a good-sized country to do this along with the fact that surely no one was going to claim jamaica so 30 seconds mm -hmm. pretty good hook uh i i was a bit meh about the discord plug yeah i felt like that, that could have come later in the video yeah. you don't want that at the beginning don't do that yeah um before we get into the video is the is the is the worst thing you could say in in an intro mm. um it's my least favorite phrase i think ever <laughs> before we get into the video like but wait a minute we are into the video as far as yeah. i'm concerned i clicked on this video we're here yeah. and it started and i was into it and then you plugged your discord it's okay to plug your discord i just think if you're going to sponsor yourself quote unquote and you want to plug things that you're doing just kind of do it at a more appropriate time that's why a lot of sponsorship plugs don't start until like one or two minutes into a video because mm -hmm. they really want to make sure that the people who are watching are now hooked like you yeah. got them and you you basically had me but that was a little bit of a turnoff yeah. yeah uh the other thing that i would say is that are you really going to in-burn caption every word you say in this video? Because why? I, I don't understand. This is very common now. I'm, I'm, I don't agree with it personally, um, but it is very, very, very common. I, I get it for like words you want to emphasize. Right. But I don't get it for the whole video. The whole video? No. And there you is all... one problem. It covers like the the youtube captions of people would prefer those right they they cover your captions youtube has auto captions you don't need inburn captions throughout your entire video when somebody can literally click a button and have the youtube caption pop up now to be fair youtube auto captions are trash <laughs> I'll, I'll be the first <laughs> to tell you but they're there they're they are there although they have gotten better i will give them that but they are there which means because we have the option to hit a button and have YouTube auto caption, you don't need to. You don't need your inbound caption throughout the entire video. Like Dan said, if you want to emphasize a few words uh, to provide that extra point of emphasis, do your thing. But the whole video being burned in caption, no nah, man, I no. I'm gonna I'm gonna age myself here though and say that uh, snow golems are very overlooked. I remember when they were added to the game; they're hilarious. Uh, but one thing that I was not sure of, and I have been out of the Minecraft loop for a while now is this country thing they keep talking about. I'm going to overtake a country. I chose Jamaica. I'm I'm guessing based on context alone that this must be a server that is supposed to represent like a scale model of the world, like our actual planet. I guess, but I don't know that. Like you never said. You just started like assuming I knew that. And maybe this is a popular enough server to where you you can ignore me because enough people know what you're talking about. But it seems like Jamaica is a very specific thing, like a very specific place that you chose. And it becomes more and more perplexing as the video goes on, how you're getting these snow golems to Jamaica and where Jamaica is relative to where you are on the map. I'm missing something here. And all you would really need is maybe a zoomed out version of this Minecraft map. So you can, instead of doing what you did, which was, I'm going to take the country of Jamaica and put it on the screen. No, this is where you take a zoomed out version of the Minecraft map and you point to Jamaica. And then you, so, and mark you, like you're here, Jamaica's here. Because getting there is probably an impressive part of this whole thing. Like you're going to have to make these snow golems and get them over there. So that was missing for me. And I just needed just a little bit more, just a little bit more context would have helped a lot here. Somebody in the chat was acting it, but isn't this the Mr. Beast wave, the fun captions? Dude, 
Mr. Beast does not in burn caption his entire video. Not he, the entire thing. No, he he in burn caption points of emphasis. That's it. He doesn't in burn caption the entire video. So pay attention to what's going on, people. Pay it, attention. But I will say, overall, I've seen this more and more and more in videos, and I've come to just accept it. I think some creators like it. I think a lot of viewers like it because there's a lot of people watching videos in environments with it where they can't use sound. So yes, there are YouTube auto captions. That's true. Um, but you have more control over these captions. You can make them look a certain way. You can you can all cap certain words and you can do all these things. And you know, you can animate them in fun ways. So I get it. I totally get it. But I do agree as as a curmudgeon myself, I, I don't I don't want to see this. Like I, I can turn captions on and off myself. Why are you doing it for me? I get that. But look at your analytics. Don't listen to just me. I I think uh there might be some precedent here. Like this might be something that's actually okay. I think they should just be higher, like physically higher so that you're, if people want to use these captions, they're not overlapping each other. Yeah. That, that's a good call out. Um, Hey, great quality video. Like this is great for a Minecraft channel. Uh, 343 subscribers, like your thumbnails um, are amazing. The things you're doing in Minecraft are really cool. I think you're doing some really cool experiments that are, you know, getting you some, awesome recognition here you're you're becoming an entity in the minecraft space this is a really really good to see it's a competitive space so you're going to be at it for a while trying to climb that mountain it it is it is quite a mountain there's a lot of creators doing what you're doing so continue coming up with cool concepts and uh yeah best of luck Absolutely. all right go get it so uh we're gonna take a look at the first random non-gaming channel and bump this up here to 340. Shout out to these over 600 of you all watching the live stream today. We appreciate you all being here and hanging out with us. So thank you for that. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Oops. 263. Uh, okay. Master Sloth. They're covering football slash soccer. Wait a minute. Is it football or is it soccer? Though? Okay. <laughs> Okay, it's soccer or football. All right, so very, 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 very short videos. Are you doing shorts? And I want to look at this. You had nothing to say specifically, and you did say you're doing shorts. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna pay most of our attention then to your shorts. Um, I can already tell you're using footage that I'm guessing you don't own. So this is already the first thing we're gonna warn you about. Be very careful because there might come a time where you get caught and YouTube pulls your channel. So it's a lot of work you're doing. That's at risk. Just plain and simple. So we are using some music and more information in the comments. I missed something, but the, the text, this font you're using is very hard to read. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say your watermark, Tricky Edits, is really hard to get around. And I'm worried because you call yourself Sloth or, or MS Edits or something. And then there's at Tricky Edits. So is this their content that you're putting on your channel? And it's a very obnoxious watermark. <laughs> it's hard to not notice. All right. The other thing that we got to talk about, Dan, is the resolution or the 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 real estate that is not being used in this short. Um, and I saw that for a few of the shorts that you're not using the entire nine by sixteen uh, resolution here. Uh, this is not the this is not a very pleasurable viewing experience for short viewers. They are used to the whole screen being covered for for short, and you're using like the middle part. Like that, you got to do something about that because that's just not going to work. I was trying to move my cursor. I realized my cursor's not showing up this time, but that's fine. Um, yeah, you want to use the entire frame. I'm noticing now this is like a challenge. That's why it was like that. So. I think Tricky Edits was putting them up to a challenge and then it switched to this widescreen thing in the middle where now it's I think it's them doing an edit or something. So I don't know. Um, let's look at another one. Free edit, add your own music. Okay, so basically I guess inviting people to add music to this content. Overall, what's missing for me with your channel is the why. I, I get I get channels that do edits and stuff, but this is even more confusing than those types of channels. I, I don't really know. 
this is almost a channel for people who like doing edits, not a channel for people who like watching edits. And so it's really confusing. I'm not sure who your target viewer is here. And I know it's shorts, but that still matters. It, it matters a lot. So if you're going to take these super cuts of football games and things like that, and you're going to edit them together, who's your audience? Who are you doing this for? Um, that's that's going to be my critique, I think. Yeah, I don't really have much more to add. The other thing is that <laughs> since you are editing the content, it just looks weird. It, 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 I don't know if you're using some type of grading or grain or filter or whatever, but the, the content looks weird because of the edits that you're doing too. So uh, there's definitely some of that, but that's probably just a part of the edit. But yeah, uh, my biggest critique is you need to figure out how to use the entire screen real estate, not just the middle part. Because that, yeah, short viewers don't want to watch that. They They don't. Yeah. All right, cool. So uh, there's Master Sloth. We will go back to the gaming forum and see that it is also over 300 responses. 333. Take. Hmm? We already saw this channel. Did we? What channel is this? 333. I went to 333. Ah. I think the form is just busted. <laughs> Damn. Look at look at what it's doing to me. It's not letting me type the number. 333. <laughs> I kind of depend on that feature. Dan is locked out. He is locked out. <laughs> Dan is locked out. Oh no. Oh, it's because there is no 3. Okay, that's why. I'm sorry. Let's just redraw. I'm just a dummy. That's all that happened. 106. It's a user error. Uh, Dan, Dan, Dan. One clear six. Our reviews in Roblox. I think uh, the question was, how come my video gets such little views? I think that's what they were asking. Oh, sorry. How come my video gets, gets such little views? They aren't low quality. All right. Um, well, we could talk about your titles and thumbnails. This is not channel review day, but that's what we would probably tell you. Uh, titles, thumbnails, red text, which is dark, really, really hard to read. Um, your thumbnails are dark, so it's hard to see. But let's get into the actual videos themselves. What's up, cats? It's the Diana Cat. This bad boy here looks nice, don't it? It's a 2021 rest and third autumn vertical. And it needs a refresh. Badly. Starts with a styling, and it's quite futuristic with an insane front light bar, sequential turn signals front and back, and a screen filled red interior, so that needs a refresh. This is a very cool car for tech and car drives alike. On the midnight cruise, and this is very loud. Okay, so we're 30 seconds in. The video did start right away. There was no no time wasted in terms of the intro, anything like mm -hmm. that. I, I will say the music was kind of fighting you. It was this weird thing with your audio where the music was like wanting to get loud, but every time you talked, it, it backed off. Oh, sorry, sorry, you're still talking. Um, I did notice that it was a bit distracting. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Okay, where does Viper begin? So, number one, uh, and this is really no fault of the creator, but you are a little bit hard to understand. So, in this particular instance, I would almost recommend you consider using burned in captions for emphasis. Like when you're talking about the interior of the car. Maybe you have a few words of what that interior is on the screen. So for those that might not understand how uh, the words that you're saying, a few uh, in-burned captions might not hurt. Um, the other thing is, <laughs> I can't believe I'll say this again, but the edit. Uh, some of your edits are a little bit too quick. Um, you all, you you got to you gotta figure out the pacing. Um, we're, as a viewer, we're trying to get comfortable. We're trying to just sit down and watch your video and try to be entertained or educated in a comfortable manner. But when you are blazing through the edits and you're going from cut to cut to cut to cut, it's kind of hard to get comfortable as a viewer. So for this creator, I would consider the burning caption for emphasis and just toning down some of the uh, edits because I feel like they they were a little too quick for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's all I have to say video wise. Um, I agree with all that. I, I think for you, you were saying you're not getting a lot of views. Uh, it's thumbnails. It's it's for me. It's uh, that's the, that's my advice there. Your your thumbnails and your titles too. They're very just straightforward. They're not, you know, they're not really saying enough. It, it just kind of says the type of car. 
But what about it? Can you use an adjective? Can you tell me how amazing the car is? Can you tell me, you know, anything about, you know, how you hate the car? You love the car? You, you know, you blew up the car? Something about the car other than just the name of the car. That's kind of, it's kind of like, eh, okay. Um, so titles and thumbnails, the packaging of your content definitely needs work. Uh, so I would look at, um, you know, some of the videos we've done. We've done a lot of stuff about titles. We've actually talked to Jake Thomas, who is a title expert. Uh, and then thumbnails, go and look at the software you're using. Look up tutorials for it so you can learn how to use it even better. And then take these cars. Let them fill up the whole frame. Get rid of this 4K logo. You don't need that. Let the let the car be the star and make it fill up half the frame. And if you're going to use text, make sure it's, like, easy to read, nice, thick text. I like white with a, with a black stroke. And say one or two words max which you're kind of already doing um use an arrow where appropriate you're already doing that but you have so look at all the negative space in your thumbnails again my cursor's not working but negative space would be whenever it's not the car and not the text everything around it is just not doing any work the one in the middle here the so much negative space all around so so really fill that space and take really really good pictures don't don't do it after you've recorded while you have the car in front of you Get into camera mode and take some nice screenshots of it. All right. And one more nitpick from me. You don't need the 4K branding in your thumbnail. Yeah. Most of the people that are watching your video can't even watch it in 4K. So why, why bother? So I would just say take that out of there. Yeah. It's it's very common to see 4K videos anyway. That, that was more impressive when no one had 4K cameras. But okay, cool. Thank you for your submission. Um, just taking a look here. All right. We have 355 responses now on the non-gaming form. 42. Uncle Buck. All right. They said Windows or Apple computer. I, I don't know if they had an actual question for us. <laughs> okay, that's a weird one. Not sure if we should look at your videos. Um, one of the things we say in the description is that if you are taking just other people's content, you know, and it doesn't look like you're kind of adding anything to it, we're we're not really uh, able to review the videos. So I'm going to move on because it just kind of looks like clips from cartoon shows, like different cartoons. And uh, you can you can do autoplay real quick, right? Just to get a quick glimpse of what's going on. Apparently not. Yeah. Okay. Let's see. Just for a sec. Characters yeah, this is yeah. kind of. Yeah. So nope. can't do that. <laughs> can't really help you. Sorry. We'll go to another one. Two ninety four. Before we go to the next channel, I think I should reiterate, and me and Dan both should reiterate that if you are uh, publishing content that you don't that does not belong to you, and you do not do anything to make it transformative. Uh, you will get copyright strike, three copyright strikes, and YouTube will terminate your channel with glee. So uh, just be aware. Uh, all right. So it's Hyper LS. They came to us and asked, how can they improve their thumbnails and create strong hooks for their videos? Um, we could definitely talk about the hooks real quick about the thumbnails. I think I think just kind of like maybe maybe go on youtube and look for look for a thumbnail tips video like for someone who who considers themselves like an expert in thumbnails um you're not doing anything super bad here you know uh i just think they could be improved overall maybe maybe it's a matter of looking well, at dan, tutorials dan you know somebody that just did an entire podcast about thumbnails dan you know somebody that did that was it you that was me yes <laughs> oh so the most recent podcast of tube talk talked all about thumbnails so if you are looking for some thumbnail pointer definitely go check out our podcast i apologize i it, it completely slipped my mind um there you go so yeah tube talk we have that link down below yes uh check the description and latest episode latest episode yep you're doing so many episodes how am i supposed to keep track <laughs> <laughs> um all right so uh yeah let's go into your actual uh videos here i might i might look at a couple of these they seem you seem to be doing a lot of different types of content about a lot of different types of things which we would not recommend um but we've already gone through that today let's just look at the latest one hey sir face time for a fight who's gonna win the fight let's find out and this side i go kesa and in this side i go tampa in my opinion i think kesa is gonna win the fight and this is why kesa had three fights and he won okay 
Go ahead. Yeah. Um, first of all, the music too loud. Yeah. Um, I can barely hear you. You got to tone down the music. You got to figure out the levels and the sound effect is definitely too loud. Like when that sound effect came, I'm like, ah, <laughs> that sound effect made me jump out of my chair, man. But I, my number one critique of you, you got to tone the music down. You got to, you got to turn it down because it's overpowering what you're saying. So I can, we can barely hear you at that point. So turn the music mm-hmm. down. That was exactly what I was going to say. Uh, loud, loud music. Um, I, I did like their hook, you know, in terms of, of how they got into the content. That was good. That was, I mean, you jumped straight in. Like, these two people are fighting. Here's who I think is going to win. Or let's talk about who I think is going to win. Like, nothing, nothing wrong with that at all. The way you animated the text on the screen, nothing wrong with that at all. It literally, your sound quality is really, really difficult for us. Um, and that's going to make a lot of people click off, unfortunately. But I think hook wise, if this is something you've been practicing, it's, it's paying off because that was that was otherwise really solid. Um, I think lighting wise, um, I would I would continue to work on your set because you have, the, I guess, a white wall behind you. It's completely blown out. It kind of looks like you're just kind of hanging out in a void and that could be improved upon as well. So check your camera settings, you know, uh, play around with your lighting a little bit. One thing that can help is turn off your overhead light in your room and get some lights that are shooting directly at you. And that way, you know, you can control the light in your space a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, sorry, sorry. yeah. So those are some of my tips. <laughs> um, all right. Take a look at a gaming channel this time, which the gaming form is at 351 now. I'll just leave it there. Okay. 210. All right. What are the best days to upload? Is there a question? Uh, I'll answer that as I go to your channel here. The best days to upload are the days that work for you. Uh, you you kind of get to set the stage there. Just you know, try to be a little bit consistent. Also, Dan, uh, if this creator wants to go look into their analytics, uh, YouTube has a whole graph in the audience session of best day, uh, best time to upload. So they have a graph of all the days and times, and they'll show you when the most people, are, when your audience is mostly on YouTube. So you could try to upload uh, somewhere within that graph and uh, depending on what data it shows you. So be aware. Yep, there you go. So uh, it looks like you are playing right now two different games. I see Modern Warfare and I see Walking Dead. This is a very old game, the Walking Dead game. Um, they they haven't made one of these in a very long time. So I, I, we haven't even gotten to one of your videos yet, but I'm going to just say right now, I think one of the things you should pay attention to is just the the interest of the audience. If you're going to be doing a gaming channel, you don't want to play a game that no one is searching for anymore. Because even if you love the game and you have a lot to say about it, it's no, if no one, if it's no one's talking about it, if no one's searching for it, you're going to kind of have an issue getting views on that content. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it had a resurgence. Maybe it had an update. I don't know. I, I thought they had abandoned this whole series, unfortunately. Um, and then we have some Call of Duty campaign videos. Uh, let's just take a look. This one's over an hour long. Um, let's see. So I don't think they can use that music. <laughs> um, here's our countdown screen. We're, we're getting ready, Viper. Oh, man. Graves will have this place locked down. Expect patrols on the outside. So th- they did say this was like what's happened last time. So they're just doing a playthrough of the campaign. Uh, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. I want to know, are they just doing a clean playthrough without talking? Or, you know, do they kind of add their personality to this kind of content? Dan, is this a live stream or a video? This is a video. Okay. So, yeah, it looks like it's just them kind of playing through the campaign. Very hard to compete with when you have probably some of the larger creators out there who've already done this content before. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this is a tough one. Uh, I'm hoping that at some point in this video, you offer you some like your verbal like personality and tell us what you're doing and why you're doing it. And just some narration will go a long way to uh, make this video more engaging to viewers. But I got a question for you. Uh, what's it? Uh, Bladed Hippo. Why are we using a countdown screen in a regular video? I don't. Why? Why are we doing that? Don't please don't do that. Eliminate that immediately. When a 
when it's not a live stream, again, I'll, if you want to use the countdown on a live stream, you know what, regardless of what Viper says, do you. But when it's a video, if I'm a YouTube viewer and I click on a non-live stream video, I am not looking for a countdown screen. I want my content delivered directly, immediately. As soon as I click on the video, I want my content. And if you present me with a countdown screen, I'm clicking off. I'm just, I'm gone. I'm, I'm out of there. And that's not why I clicked on the video. So I would say eliminate that. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's hard to critique a video like this. Uh, I think I, I think what uh, the advice we kind of need to give is, again, who's the content for? You know, if, if it's just a playthrough of Call of Duty and you're not doing any commentary whatsoever uh, and you're just playing through the campaign, who is this content for uh because a lot of a lot of really large channels in the game first came out are going to have this covered this is going to be covered and a lot of channels that do this strategy of like really long playthroughs of a whole game and they don't commentate they upload those videos very fast they want to be the first one to have that com campaign complete from beginning to end they'll upload multiple videos on the same day just to make sure their series playlist is done and they're doing that on top of making other content like tips and tricks and things like that so even if this is something you believe in and you like this kind of content and you feel like there it could grow, you're not doing enough to bolster it by also having like really good tips and tricks videos and things like that. You're just kind of uploading gameplay of the game and not adding your personality to it. And that's all you're doing. Listen, I know we have a whole form for gaming creators on vidIQ and I love y'all to death. But if I want you flat out gameplay, I'm not going to any of y'all. I'm going to IGN. I'm going to GameSpot. I'm going to the big boys. You, I know I can get regular, just flat out gameplay from them. I'm not going to y'all. So I come to you all because I want personality. I want some analysis. I want some extra that I can't get from an IGN or a GameSpot or a Game Radar. So when you're putting gaming content out there, especially with uh, with Let's Play, I need you to imbue some of your personality into the content because why else would I come and stick around? So I need y'all to think about that. Like Dan said, who is the content for when you're uploading? Like, who are you trying to reach? Yeah. Um, it's a trade-off. Uh, gaming channels and any channel, like, there, there's the thing that's easiest to do that's the most fun, right? And then there's the thing that takes a ton of work, research, and preparation. And I think, ideally, creators want to meet somewhere in the middle. You want to do something really fun that you love doing, but you also want to provide some value and, and do some work, too, so people want to watch that content. And I would say this channel is all the way on the on one end of that spectrum right now. It's just, I'm just doing the thing that is most fun for me. And there's no consideration for who's going to watch this content. Why would they watch this content? And you got to meet people in the middle. You've got to do some extra work here. What what's the, what's the next place you can take this content? Well, there's probably hidden secrets throughout the campaign. Maybe there's glitches. Maybe there's other things like that. If you love this game... Some of that should come naturally to you. Some of that you should know how to find already and you can just make videos on it. And some of it, maybe you'll have to go out and research. You'll look on subreddits and things like that and you'll see on, on the Call of Duty subreddit, someone's like, has this ever happened to anyone before? And they're posting a glitch. Go find that spot, record your own version of it and like bring attention on YouTube to that glitch. You can use other parts of the community to fuel the content ideas for your channel, but it takes more work. But it's still, at the end of the day, you get to make gaming videos about one of your favorite games. And now they're getting views because you're actually bringing value to people. You're showing them something cool they didn't know. Uh, you're being helpful. You're being funny, whatever it might be. But yeah, with a lot of content on YouTube, that's what I see. It's it's people not willing to meet the audience in the middle. All right, Dan, I'm going to need a moment. What? But, but, but I just gave that big speech. You did. So I'm not going to put y'all on blast, but I think some of y'all commenting in the chat about how we're focusing on channels and not putting in much work. Listen, we're not we're not going to show prejudice to channel. If you submit your channel to be reviewed and we pick it, we're going to give you our full effort into reviewing the channel, no matter what that channel is doing. The reason why we do this is for you all to improve and get better. We want people to we want all of you all to win. So maybe they're putting in low effort as you are categorizing it in the chat because they don't know any better. You don't know what you don't know. So we're here to help everybody, not just the ones that y'all feel like are putting in the work. We're here to help all the creators that want to be successful on YouTube. So I need y'all to have a little bit more respect for the creators that are submitting their channel because it's a hard thing to submit channels on here. I mean, when you submit a channel to your review, you are putting yourself on blast in front of all of our audience. And that's not, that, might not be, that might not be an easy thing for the creators, but they're willing to do it because they're here to learn. So we're going to treat them just the same as we treat everybody else. 
if we pick your channel, we're going to take you through the good, the bad, and we're going to give you some actionable feedback. And we just need you all in the chat to just rock with us and respect that. Again, I know some of y'all get mad because you don't get your channel picked, and that's fine. But a lot of the advice that we give can apply to all of you all in the chat. So if you just stick around and listen and take some notes, a lot of this stuff can apply to you as well. So I just need y'all to have a little more respect for what we do out here and just uh, keep rocking with us. And thank you. All right. We will take a look at the next non-gaming channel. 307. And uh, they do music, film, and animation videos, they said. What can increase view count and retention for a small music video about a classical piece or an original piece, not the average music video? Okay. Music channels are a toughie for us, but we'll, we'll, see, we'll see what we can see here. We were talking about view count, right? That was the question they asked? Yeah, uh, view count for a music video. So before we get into the video, first thing I'm going to say is when I look at your videos, I don't see music channel. Mm -mm. That's that's the biggest thing. If you're if you're trying to get views, it's all about first and foremost the packaging of your videos. And everything we're seeing here, it, it doesn't this does not say music channel to me at all. I feel like I'm in a geometry class and the name even implies geometry. Yeah, that's a good point, too. Interesting. Um, so another thing that can help is obviously more videos, just more shots of the target. But go out and look at other channels that you are inspired by that you would like to be like one day and, and see how they're doing their thumbnails. How are they pitching their videos? Because none of these really say, I think, what you think they say. So I guess uh, they're giving away like sound effects there. They recorded, you know, some sounds of event. Um, let's see. Okay, so that that one's the closest one I've seen, like the dark winter arrangement. But uh, yeah, a lot of the stuff is is really it's really difficult for us to say. I think the packaging here is what you're going to want to work on. It's hard to do video reviews of a music channel. We also don't know, and this is not anything against you, just out of our own safety. We don't know where the music came from. So <laughs> it's probably fine, but I don't want to take a lot of risks watching any more than that. Um, but go out and look at look at some channels that are successful in the space. Just do, do, do that research. Uh, just before we move on, um, like Dan said, music channels are hard because we don't know what your intentions are. We don't know exactly what you're trying to do, but one of the one of the, some of the advice that I always offer music channels is if you want to if you want people to pay attention, especially when you're a newer creator and people don't know you, you have to find a way to tie your music into a popular artist. Um, you can maybe you're doing a, a cover for a popular artist, or maybe you're doing something that sounds something like what uh, Taylor Swift did or Michael Jackson doing or something like that. But if you can find a way to tie your piece into a popular artist's piece then you're going to get a lot more eyes on you because people are going to be curious because they know that artist, but they don't know you. So when you're a music challenge, you got to find a way to tie your stuff into a popular artist, and then you'll begin to get those eyes on you. There you go. All right. Uh, we will look at the next channel. Uh, let's let's do another non-gaming channel. Um, and we, oh, we're almost, almost up to 400 here. I think 169 people watching the live stream. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for being here. 197. Making hip-hop music. Okay. How can I improve my videos to gain views? All right. So, before we just get into the video, one thing you can do is better titles better thumbnails cuz these don't look like music videos they look like is it muay thai how i don't know how i'm saying that right yep yeah muay thai videos maybe that's all they are i don't know but it, you told us you're like a hip hop music channel it doesn't look like that on the surface and again packaging is everything this reminds me of that <laughs> And 
It is not a music video. That is not music. That's barring. Yes. So there is there is some audience focus issues going on here where you know you have it looks like you have two different channels you have a channel where you're showing sparring and uh it's recorded in vertical format but it's a long form video it's like five minutes long um so that's it makes it a little bit harder to watch and then you have videos where i think you're doing your hip-hop stuff yeah they're So I guess they're remixing the video here on the right. Yeah, there's definitely a lack of a uh, focus on this particular channel. Yeah, but uh, th I I would say title wise, you're probably right on the money. Thumbnail wise, I think the thumbnail could be a little bit better. Um, just instead of you all the way back here, like it would have been cool to see like an angle, like a higher up angle of the board you're using, like the equipment you're using, things like that. Um, but yeah, it's. I don't think it's necessarily a matter of like, oh, how can I, you know, what what can I do with my music videos to get more views? It's it's really a channel focus issue. Sometimes you're going to get people who are interested in your sparring videos, and sometimes you're going to get people interested in the music videos, and those interests, there's not a lot of overlap there. So you really do have two different channels on your hands here, which for video review wise, it's kind of hard to ignore. It's hard to review the videos themselves because this issue is really the thing that I think is holding this channel back. Well said, Dan. Well said. Um, I want to, I, I would like to dive in more. It's just, yeah, it, it's, it is difficult. Um, I think, I, I think I would first worry about that. All right. We will go to the next channel. 282. Okay. Playing Clash Royale. They said, I've been trying to figure out thumbnails recently, so the only decent one is the last video uploaded. How can I make more people click on the video? All right. So they're they're saying that the most recent video, they've they've taken the time to put more work into their thumbnails. I think it's showing. I, I think it's uh the text isn't isn't really easy to read because it's kind of like black text on a dark background. Uh so I would I would have done white text here, maybe with like a black stroke around it or a shadow or something like that. And then I think the crossbow element in the middle also makes it kind of hard to see when you just wanted to compare these like two things side by side. Like I would make it simpler. This looks like our old blue background that we used to use on the thumbnail, by the way. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, you 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 know I know I'm gonna let you go over because you know where I'm going, Dan. Okay, so I know it's a mobile game, so it, that does kind of limit your options in terms of screen resolution. I I totally get that. That's fine. Um, it's still not the best viewing experience, even despite that. It's just it's such a weird sliver of a screen that I'm kind of looking at. Uh, so. I don't know. I would I would continue. I would again. This is a matter of looking at other channels. How do they edit their videos? Uh, I would try and follow what's popular in in the space. Keep going. I had to waste Tesla to defend. Okay, so they're explaining what they're doing with text on the screen, but I didn't. It took me a really long time to even see that because I was watching yeah. all the other stuff flying around, and that's where you could use the screen real estate to kind of zoom in again on those types of types of interesting things. Why not commentate this content? Even if it's after the fact, like get a microphone, get a decent microphone and tell us what's happening. Why do I have to read? Reading is hard. You guys have tried to, you've heard me try to read out loud before. You know how that goes. It's always bad. Like just talk, be, you know, be on YouTube, put your voice behind this content. I think it would help quite a bit. Um, those are the biggest critiques I have. Yeah, that I had to wait to test to defend. I can barely read that. It's too small and it's in the wrong color. Like that black font is almost unreadable with, uh, on that background. So you need to change the color of that tech, change the font and change the color of that, that, that text. I mean, hell, you got two dead zones right next to the video. You can put it in the dead zone. You want to do that? Uh, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, uh, it's Clash Royale.
Hey, what's up, guys? We're back again with a good Mega Knight deck for the next year. Look how much personality we're getting from this, this video the second we click on it, right? And they're doing a lot of things that would be a pretty radical change for you. They, they are on screen. They have, they're, they're using their mic and their camera. And they have a mobile game on their hands. And so what they've decided to do is take the mobile game on one side and fill the rest of the screen with them and maybe some stats underneath, which is what they're doing here. This, to me, is a much more pleasant viewing experience and your direct competition. So this is a tough one. Sometimes the game you pick, like the one you feel like you love and you use the most, um, may not be in line with the way you're comfortable making content. So you have to ask yourself, am I ready to leave my comfort zone or should I pick another type of game that you know I can record in a way that's comfortable for me? But when you're competing with channels like these, it's it's tough. It's going to be real tough, and I I want to see you succeed. So that's that's kind of the the tough love advice I have for you. And I, I'm I'm sorry I don't have anything more, you know, <laughs> anything that that would require less work because what I've just done is given you a lot of work. All yeah, right, uh, let's. We want to get to a couple supers here. Sure, why not? Old man Gibb. According to analytics, most of my viewers are coming from the U.S. and Germany. Almost an equal split. Which should I use for the best upload time? Of uh, oh, if I think they're saying if it matters at all. Um, thanks a million. Uh, thanks. Um, what do Where you? Where are you located? Are you located in the U.S. or Germany? I'm. I'm going to assume you are you located in the U.S. I, about you, I, I would just upload according to U.S. time. Um, you obviously, I think there's like a six-hour time difference between us and Germany, I believe. So the thing about, here's the thing about best time to upload. There are so many different time zones going on simultaneously around the world that in reality, it doesn't really matter when you upload. YouTube is going to disseminate the video when and where it needs to go. So even if they're, I know they have the, I told you, I told you guys earlier about the graph that they have in analytics that shows you the best time that your audience is on the platform. But in reality, that doesn't really matter. You go upload at 2 a.m. It's going to get to somebody. And then when your other audience comes onto the platform later on that day, they're going to see it. So just upload when you can upload, really. <laughs> yeah, YouTube's got you covered. I would, I would stick to breakfast for you, dinner for them. Or vice versa. I mean, dinner for you, breakfast for them. What, whatever works. Um, I... I, I say I'm I'm using meals as a uh, as a barometer because I personally watch the most YouTube when I have food in front of me. <laughs> that's <laughs> just being honest. That's when I watch YouTube the most. I don't know how other people are, but I'm either winding down for the night or I am eating something and I want I want to watch something. So yeah, but it really it truly doesn't matter for the long term of your video. It just just be consistent whatever you choose and your audience will get used to it. And all that does is it helps you get views a little bit faster early on because you keep uploading around the same time. So people are used to it. So when that happens, you get a lot of really good early data as to how your video is going to do. And then YouTube can say, okay, the regular viewers feel this way about it. Therefore, I feel this way about it. You know, if you upload at a weird time and, not, and your regular viewers don't see it, it just might take a little bit longer for it to kind of get going. But YouTube themselves have always said it doesn't really matter when you post for the long-term health it just doesn't um so yeah uh us arizona thanks a million you're welcome you're welcome no problem. uh thank you for the super chat quick tip viper was talking about personality is important make voices for characters show excitement and find some cool things i i've uh, said it before and i'll say it again it is literally called youtube when people click on youtube they are expecting to get an element of you your personality into your content so when you're posting up a, a left play with no narration, no like editing, the and nothing like that, you're just uploading bland content that we can get anywhere. The the question, and I, I've said it before and I'll say it again, the question that you need to ask as the creator, when you upload a video to YouTube, before you hit publish, ask yourself, why should someone watch your video? If you can answer that question pretty easily, hit publish. If you have to think about it, if, you, if it's taking you a while to try to figure out why would somebody watch your particular video, then it's time to go back and make some tweaks and changes to that particular video until you can easily answer that question. But you got to understand why somebody will watch your content in order for it to be successful on the platform. 
There you go. Uh, thanks, everyone, for the super chats. Appreciate it. We got a, some more channels here we got to get to. Uh, next one's a non-gaming channel. So we have over 400 responses on that form. I will go ahead and bump this up to a random number. Number not worth writing home about. Just a random one. 177. Uh, Storyverse. All right. Their comment just says no views. Yeah, we know what that means. It's like they're doing... Well, hold on. Let's see. What'd they say? Long oh, they form were... videos. Oh, they were literally not lying. They're... They got a video with no views. Wow. Okay. Wow. They have a premiere, and then they have one with four views, no views. All right, Dan, let's watch the no, the no view video. I got to check this out. You want us to be the first? Might as well. Let's... Choosing a dog over pregnant wife. That okay. might be glitching well, because I know you two were glitching yesterday. That's true. Views the last day or so have been kind of wonky. Long for prioritizing my son's dog over my wife's pregnancy. When my son was eight, we got a dog. My son loves this dog and does all the care for him and is a very responsible dog owner. This dog is pretty much his best friend. My wife is 12 weeks pregnant, and ever since we confirmed the pregnancy, she's been acting weird around the dog. She avoids him, puts her hands over her stomach when he's around. Today, she told me she wants to rehome the dog. I asked her what she was talking about. She says she has been having anxiety that he will jump on her. This is completely unreasonable. Okay, so I guess we get the, the content is delivering on the click, right? Like, uh, it, And it's just them telling a story mm -hmm. using a lot of B-roll and uh, clips from movies and, and things like that. Yep. Um, I want to look at this one. My website has made over $200,000 since 2020 in passive income. I built everything in two months, and this is how. I live in Sweden and had the idea that I wanted to create a website that gives you example sentences for any given Swedish word you enter. I googled in English to see if you can find a similar website for English sentences. I found many of them. Then I used Alexa.com to evaluate how much traffic those websites drove. Okay, so they're telling stories i mean the, every time i click it, i guess it pays off i i know what's going on but i just i gotta figure out how to explain it properly yeah that's i i think we're in the same boat right now your content is missing the you part of youtube that's basically what i'm what i'm trying to say i just don't know how to elocute it to to make it relevant to you but all the b-roll is really unrelated um in a way i know i know you're trying to tie it together in a way that re it relates to the story that you're telling but the fact that all the B-roll that you're using is unrelated to each other makes it a little weird as far as the viewer watching your content. So it's a little crazy in that way. So you got to figure out how to uh, to make it relate and uh, maybe try putting yourself on camera or something to that extent. It uh, doesn't look like it's coming from the same place because it's like sometimes yeah. it's a cartoon that's really old. Sometimes it's a newer TV show, sometimes a movie. Uh, when When people use a lot of like stock footage and stuff, you know, a lot of that stock footage makes sense, and it looks like they're coming to. They're all the stock footage is all like part of the same family of like footage that people are looking at. So I think what Viper was saying is, yeah, it's it just feels like we're all over the place. Um, I think using using popular media in videos is something people do all the time, and it's okay. But it's like when your whole video is that, it kind of all the fun bits kind of go away. You know, it it's not as fun to watch. Um, I think. Your larger issue here isn't necessarily your storytelling or your editing, though. I think the larger issue is, again, an overall channel audience focus. Sometimes you're talking about making passive income. Sometimes you're talking about how much money you made, like, you know, in general, which is good. I would expect that of a type of channel. But then sometimes you're talking about choosing a dog over a pregnant wife, parents in a thruple, um, you know, Discord chat. Uh, like we have copied Mr. Beast Burger. Like you, co you cover more topics than I think you realize. If you want to talk about money and making money and doing things like side hustles and things like that, that itself is a whole channel. You are catering to a very specific type of viewer. If you're going to talk about a time you stole money from a restaurant, that's a different, even though money's involved, that's a different type of audience. That's a different type of channel. That's more like, you know, drama and things like that um i'm a discord mod like totally different like what okay what does that have to do with the money stuff that you're doing so for you it's 
it's not i'm i'm less worried about your editing and i'm more worried about your channel focus it it's just not it's not there um and and the way you're using b-roll and your thumbnails for that matter kind of feel like the channel is you know a lot of these videos it feels like they came from a different place there's not enough tying these things together so yes uh it's, it's someone in chat saying uh it's an automation channel and i think what, what they mean is this is one of those channels where we've seen these before where people basically have like chat gpt or something like that write a script for them and they, they make a whole channel using an ai voice and all this all these other elements when you do that as a strategy though like this is what you know if that is what you're doing this is what i would expect that would look like right like you're you're kind of like cherry picking different topics that are interesting to you but you you've lost the part of youtube that is really really important you want to build an audience you're here at vidIQ trying to ask us like how do i build an audience how do i grow you can't grow if you're not willing to cater your content to a specific type of viewer you can't just like put stuff out there and then hope that everyone just like flocks to it it's it, you really have to start small and build out over time um viper city be right back i'm i'm uh going to take a super chat real quick before we go to the next one i started knowing nothing about youtube two and a half months into it am i growing too slow or typical growth um rapid repair thank you for the super um i can't go looking at your channel because supers will not uh, get channel reviews but what i will say is if you're two months into it um give yourself some time i i don't know what size your channel is i don't know how it's doing but give yourself some time i've seen channels get a thousand subscribers in a week and i've seen channels reach a hundred thousand subscribers but it took them four years you know it there's no pace on youtube that is like by the book there it's going to be different for everybody it's going to depend on way too many factors um and two and a half months i wouldn't be worried i i think you're at the stage right now where you're just probably trying to learn figure things out make improvements to your content um so yeah that that would be my advice to you i i wouldn't worry too too much all right um let's jump back over to the claw and take a gaming channel 209. Oops. Two. Oh boy. 209. Cinematic MC stories. I'm assuming Minecraft. Other than producing more slash regular content, which is my plan in, in, oh, my plan every two weeks, which I focus on next. And just to double check, you said long form videos. Okay. So you're looking to make content about every two weeks. Uh, all right. Training the best horse, flying into Minecraft SMP. Let's look at the latest video. I'm going to skip to the middle. But it'll activate our okay, okay. I just wanted to know if that was the whole video. Because 20 seconds in, it you said your cinematic Minecraft channel, it looked good. Okay, I'm not saying it didn't look good. It was just after after about five seconds, I kind of understood the, the point. I think you, you went a little too long here. Because we're 35 seconds in. 44 seconds in. So almost a whole minute before we get to you introducing the, the actual content that we clicked on. It's literally a minute. Anyway, it doesn't make much sense for us to have a horse on this island as we can run from one end to the other in about 30 seconds. And all of the interesting places are on the mainland. We need to set up something out there. A place to keep Aurelia, a place to train her. And then when we got to you, <laughs> you didn't sound super excited to see us. 
Oh. I'm not trying to be mean. It's just, did you feel that? I felt, I felt that. I'm also hearing myself echo. Oh, sorry. I will reshare the screen, but go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> you mean to tell me that you and Pepe to sit through a 45 second intro with just music before you come on and talk to me? I'm not doing that. Okay, I'm gone. You lost me after the first 10 seconds. What? Are you, no, you, bro. How many times do we have to tell y'all that when a viewer clicks on your video, you need to deliver on that click as soon as humanly possible? And I'm sorry, uh, zeroed, but you did not do that. I can't, I, I don't even want to know how many viewers you lost in the first like 10 seconds just because they were waiting for you to come on the screen or tell them something. And there, we got nothing. We, we got nothing. So you got to work on um, delivering that click immediately. And what you're doing right now is not it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was a cool like cinematic thing you did. But I, I think without any context for what the video was even going to be and for how long it went on, um that that is an issue for sure that's gonna be the biggest thing and what stinks is like that was the highest energy part of the video with the music and the lighting and everything you did very high energy very epic um and i think there was you know something there i i think if you were to do that for the first 10 seconds or so that's fine even better you do that and the music fades down and you start talking about you know what i'm seeing like start start using this as b-roll that might be even another layer you could add to it that might be really interesting um but you asked us what you should focus on next it's being concise that's that's going to be the biggest tip and then i would also work on this energy right here because you're you're doing this episodic let's play it looks like it even says season five so it feels like you've maybe been around on youtube for a bit but you've unlisted other videos i don't know but i think s five is you saying season five it's it's the thing is i'm not going to watch the first episode i'm a new viewer and i wanted to learn about taming a horse in survival so cool like um i'm gonna watch this person's video it's 10 minutes long oh cool epic intro nice uh even if i got through all of that you didn't you didn't really say anything it was just kind of like where, where do you come up i was gonna fly cows don't fly anyway it doesn't make much sense. cows don't fly anyway I, I, I there must be an inside joke there i missed as a new viewer i'm not feeling welcomed into this content at all i, I i'm not seeing how i'm going to get the value that i'm seeking to get as a new viewer so you are making content right now for a, a, a for a returning viewer you're making content for somebody who already knows who you are it's time to pitch your content in a new way, different titles and thumbnails. And it's time to consider those new viewers through every step of the process, not just the title and thumbnail, but the intros as well. Throughout the whole video, you need to pretend that, hey, a thousand people might see this. And if a thousand people see that, I know I'm reaching a lot of people that have not seen me before. So I need to make sure that this content makes them feel welcomed. So they're willing to come back to the next one. So those are our tips there. Mm-hmm. All right, um, let's take a look at a non-gaming channel. And that form is up to 430 plus responses. For all your submissions. Those forms get cleared every week, by the way. So if you submitted before, like during our last one, 167, um, you will need to submit again. Storied knowledge, philosophy, education, is my concept too weird to get a large audience? Okay, pretty specific question there. What do they say they do? Long, long form videos, okay. What did the stories think about virtue and emotions? Sto oh, Stoics, sorry, I was like, what? Uh, Stoic ethics, how the Stoics thought the mind worked. Ooh. So, asking you to go watch the first two Ooh. parts? After a half day's walk, I arrived where I came to the village. The tree was there waiting for me in Virtue Street. It continued its lessons. Yeah, to answer your question, yes, 
but only because of the way you're currently building this content. Um, their question was, if you don't remember, is their concept too weird to get a large audience? I think this presentation of it might be. What do you think? Yeah, I'm, I go back to what I was saying earlier about music channels and how they can give you uh, for stuff like this that is really like very, very niche down or very uh, specific to a particular subject matter or a group of people. You have to find a way to make it more broadly appearing, appealing. Excuse me. So uh, instead of instead of saying what did the stoic think, see if you can come up with a popular stoic out there. Cause I'm pretty sure there's a bunch of popular stoic people out there that that mainstream uh, people would know and love and think about. So whether that be an actual real person or hell, you could use a fictional person, use a TV character that people know. Uh, analyze something that they said or something that they did and then relate that to your own content. And maybe you could do an analysis and break down why they thought that way or why did they take that particular action? That is how you get people in the door. Again, when you're a newer creator and you're just starting out and you're doing this particular content like this, you have to find a way to get a broader audience involved with your content. And to do that, you're going to have to find a, a way to relay your content or, or cater your content to relate to somebody that's famous or somebody that's more popular than you or somebody that is a known entity in the area of the subject matter that you're covering. Once you're able to do that, then you have a pathway to open up your avenue to get the eyes on your content that you want to do. Yeah, one, one idea that I had was uh, just to broaden the audience. Um, instead of the title you have uh, in the thumbnail, I would make a tweak to the thumbnail and then I would say, this society had the best ethics or this society had the worst ethics or something like that. Because what you're trying to do is teach people about a society that may they, they may not have like thought to look into, right? Like they're they're not actively thinking about this, so they're not searching for it. So how can you make it appeal to a broader audience? Well, that's another way. If, if there's certainly historical figures you can relate to, great. Uh, if your stories just don't always have that ability, then think about this from a broader perspective. Stoic isn't the word. That's not the word people are going to be using. But if they feel like they're going to learn something about a society that in modern time we consider a different way, like they had the worst ethics, that's going to be really attractive, I think, to click on. I think it's going to be like, oh, tell me more. You know, I, now this is like, a, I'm suddenly curious about this new thing I wasn't thinking about a minute ago. Um, I'm okay with the, you know, the part numbers of like, oh, hey, you really got to watch part one and part two. You were upfront about it, so it's fine. Um, I would love a previously on instead, I think. Maybe just something to test out and try. Uh, but sometimes your content runs concurrently and there's nothing you can do about it that's it some some channels just be that way but yes uh I, I think your first one did a better job the key to stoic philosophy explained in a story this is more approachable to a broader audience i still don't exactly know what stoic philosophy like i that's not it's not i'm saying i don't know what it is i'm saying that's not a term I'm thinking of at any given time. Stoic philosophy. So I think this could be even broader, but it makes sense to me why that video has 200, almost 300 views, and the other ones don't have anywhere near that. And it's it's because they just have a very narrow appeal. So the packaging of your content can help. And then when you get into a part three, a part four, a part five, just try and do a little bit more to, to get a new viewer excited to go back and watch. Like convince me, convince me that I should go back. Don't just tell me this is best enjoyed by seeing part one. If you have a really strong hook and then you tell me part one is better than part two or part one is going to give me more context than part two, get me in with that hook first. Like do something to hook me into the content as a new viewer and then tell me to go back. Um, so those are just some tips for you. Uh, we have another super I want to hit real quick. Um, I, is switching up content a positive or a negative thing? I'm making gaming videos, but I'm considering doing reaction videos. Will this ruin my chance of growth? Mm, no. I mean, no. Yeah, go ahead. It really just depends on what you, the creator, want to do. What, what are you passionate about? What do you want to do? If you're not passionate about making gaming content anymore, then it's time to switch it up. Now, the trick comes where... How is your current channel doing? Like, are, are is it a new channel? 
uh, how long have you been making content? What what are the view counts and what are the response to your current uh, content looking like? Will your audience be potentially open to you pivoting to a new type of content? If so, then cool. If not, then you might have to consider making a brand new channel to start over. But it really just depends on how you how your current audience feels about you maybe starting a new journey. Okay, yeah, uh, that's that's pretty much what I was going to say. Um, I'm, I have I have friends that are kind of going through this right now, and it kind of comes down to like, should I start a new channel, or do I want to just put this on my current one? Either way, you're going to kind of have like a thing where it's like you're starting over at the end of the day. So that's what I'd be asking myself. But really, whenever you think about leaving one channel behind to start something else, just know that you've learned a lot and your your start won't be as slow as it was the first time you did YouTube because you, you've you taken on a lot of education. You've learned a lot of things subconsciously that you're just better at and you've learned things that just at the front of your mind that are like, okay, I know not to do this. I'm going to I'm going to approach it this way. So you might consider another channel just in case one day you want to come back to gaming, but it's, it's really a personal preference. Just go into that pivot knowing you're going to lose some people. Yep. It's just going to happen. Okay. Um, cool. Before we leave, I have a thought exercise for all of y'all in the chat. And I want you to put your answers in the chat after I ask you this question. And I have a simple question for all of y'all in the chat. Why do you come back week after week to this YouTube channel and watch our content and our live streams? Simple question. Why do you come back week after week to vidIQ's YouTube channel and watch our videos and our live streams? I need you to put your answers in the chat. And then I will, I, will, I mean, my guess is that there are going to be some common themes that show up in all of your answers. But uh, let's see what happens. Right. Keep learning to learn to improve my videos, grow my channel, learn how to do stuff. Find it all really interesting. I couldn't click that one. Watch your live stream in the hopes of learning something new each time. Okay. First time here. Welcome to all the first time Welcome. viewers, by the way. Yeah. Okay. So, improve. so already I'm seeing that the common theme is that you all come here to learn. So that tells me that you all find value in what vidIQ is presenting to you all, which is why you keep coming back. And the reason why I asked you all this is because I need you all to take what I just did and apply it to your own channel and your own philosophy and way of, and reasoning for why you make your content. Like I, like I said earlier in the live stream, before you hit upload, ask yourself why would someone watch your video? So you all just said that you come here to learn. So mm -hmm. you, th you see us as an educational uh, outlet for you all, and we are happy to be that. But you have to discover that same purpose for your own channel. So I need you to do that same thought exercise for yourself and your channel. Mm -hmm. Why will a viewer come back to watch your content time and time again? And when you can do that, and when you have that figured out, whoo, the guy is the limit. It, I mean, and another way to think about that is if I popped on here on a Wednesday, and instead of doing video reviews or Q&A or anything like that, I decided, you know what? I really, really like the new Forza game. So you guys are today, you get the privilege of watching me stream that. Isn't that fun? A lot of you probably wouldn't watch because you just said you came here to learn. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to, I'm not doing it to give you knowledge. No, no, no. I have two interests here. I like talking about YouTube and also Forza is really fun. So we're doing the Forza thing today. That that's what happens when we run across channels that pivot over and over again to all different types of content. It's people keep coming to your channel to do something. And then sometimes you take it away from them. And then if I were to do that, I couldn't even get mad. If I were to do the, the gaming thing, I couldn't even get mad that people wouldn't show up. But some people here do, do get mad. They're like, no, I don't understand. I thought I was growing. Why can't I just do whatever? Like, even the channels that look like they're doing whatever have a very specific strategy they're, impl they're implementing. And sometimes it's just not super clear. But yeah, no, good thought exercise. I, I think uh, anyone should be asking themselves the same thing. Why should somebody come back to my channel? Indeed. There that's you go. All we got. That's all we that's got it. for you today. Yep, that's it. You're dismissed. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Have a great rest of your day, week. Stay safe. Uh, we'll see you with a new video on Friday. Got some shorts over the weekend. Got a new video Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, live streams. Blah, 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 blah. Go away. Bye. <laughs>